Spending whole days in front of computers is tiresome. Adding the extra TV time during lunch and the occasional movie or series, the habit of playing video games for long sittings just felt like something I had no fun doing. Board games were always more attractive in that they drove you away from the computer. So here are the good ones. I tried to mix genres, but let's be honest, for the most part, puzzle games, atmosphere-oriented platformers and interactive stories would fit these conditions. Her Story Her Story is both an FMV game and a top-notch thriller. In this game, you don't really who you are playing as and what you are actually looking for. You are left with hours of interview footage of a woman who, presumably, murdered her husband. You take it from there, and you only have a search bar to uncover the truth. Her story has basically no gameplay, you search, you watch an excerpt or two, and watching an excerpt leads you to another keyword to search. Yet in its simplicity it is stimulating from beginning to end, and it cleverly disseminates its twists and turns. From a game designer perspective, this is a masterstroke that this video explains with talent. Playing this with someone else is like doing a good escape game, being proactive in a thriller movie and tying up everything as a team feels rewarding. Quick additional note, after her story, I would love to be able to say that Telling Lies is a great follow-up game. But despite the similar premise, there is none of the beauty and simplicity there that is present in her story. That the player is watching long pieces of conversation interrupted by long pauses doesn't make much sense from the start. The gameplay drags the good bits of the story down to a point where you just don't really care about the characters anymore. By the end of the game, you're just left feeling severely annoyed. So I would advise you to avoid that and hope Sam Barlow's next game will deliver more. Inside I should have mentioned Limbo instead, but I preferred Inside so much more. You play a runaway boy escaping a gloomy industrial landscape, where a bunch of what we think are scientists appear to be running experiments on humans, that at this stage are more or less soulless bodies. While Limbo's puzzles sometimes don't really match its atmosphere and don't make sense in its diegesis, there is something about Inside that always feels like everything you do means something, which makes it more engaging and therefore more horrific. From the upbeat beginning to its grotesque ending, it is thrilling, chilling, and has some challenging bits, yes, the water monster stays in your mind forever. Journey This is generally on top of everyone's list when it comes to short games, a little less than two hours. Journey is an exploration game. You cannot lose or be killed, you can only go forward through stunning landscapes. You get from one point to another with ease, it's fluid and beautiful, and its overall mystical symbolism feels peaceful. It doesn't give you much to chew on story-wise, whatever you might interpret, but the few hours you will spend playing will be memorable. Another graphically stunning and poetic follow-up would be Gree, even if it is a bit overwrought in its drama. Pikunik You are a red beast that can roll, jump, expand its legs, and presumably the savior of an island exploited by a capitalist mogul. This platformer, enriched with some additional minigames that all fit very well into the storyline, had no subtle and difficult moments but was just one funny and enjoyable experience. The gameplay feels solid and comfortable, the story is just stupidly witty and everything you end up doing is full of surprises. This feels like a kid's game and you feel like a kid completing it. There is no game, wrong dimension. Ting is a unique point and click that requires you to take a bit of distance in how you generally use a UI. It takes some time accommodating to its logic, which causes a bit of frustration at first, plus the ending is maybe a little less challenging than its middle parts, but all these meta puzzles are pretty cool to solve. The story, which is basically a game that doesn't want to play telling you that you should leave, is fun and original, and kindly cites and mocks different genres. Doki Doki Literature Club Interactive storytelling is generally very limited in scope and often ends up being linear and boring, because, most of the time, it isn't real interactive storytelling like Chris Crawford would define it. Visual novels are games that are not much more complex than a choose-your-adventure story or Netflix's Bandersnatch, and for that reason, I just never really even tried the genre. 
The hype around Doki Doki Literature Club and its classification in the horror genre was for sure intriguing. DDLC is still very linear and pressing the spacebar all the time gets a bit cringy, especially in the first half of the game where not much happens. Yet it delivers an experience truly unique with a midway twist that just sucks you up until you end the game, or the game ends you for good. You still have to persist for a good hour before it gets really good. Little Nightmares Little Nightmares is yet another kid escaping something game, and maybe the only one in this list that closely resembles another one inside in this case. The overall art direction is properly stunning, and there is a lingering feeling of being trapped in a wrong fairy tale. There is little to no plot, but there are some great hints at what the rules of this universe are and what is at stake. I would still choose inside over it, but this is a great follow-up, and well, did I mention the art? The White Door Though there are a number of games from developer Rusty Lake, I chose The White Door because of the black and white, graphic novel style, and its topic, a man struggling with depression. Like a lot of puzzle games, you have to accept that there is sometimes no relation between what you do and how the plot goes forward. The game's layout is innovative, the overall sour mood never hides an actual optimism, and the puzzles are never far-fetched and all feel rewarding. While some other Rusty Lake games have a great reputation, The White Door was the one that, after a few minutes of playing, made me feel like I wanted to finish it. Untitled Goose Game Schadenfreude is the word that best defines this game. Playing one goose or two geese in a typical English countryside village, you are given a to-do list of achievements whose purpose is to spread mayhem and outrage among the villagers. I would actually love to play a massive online multiplayer game with gangs of geese with exactly the same art direction and gameplay. Apart from a few frustrating bugs, UGG really has a unique feel to it. Playing it for 30 to 45 minute sittings would be advisable though, as it can feel a bit repetitive when you spend more. Oxenfree I still don't know today if I should advise Oxenfree or not. Lots of people are hyped for it, and the teenager stuck on a haunted island theme sure was a good starting point. I personally felt it had very good bits, but was disappointed in how the plot wrapped up. The story itself could have been really scary if all the characters weren't acting so casual when hearing ghosts menacing them or being bloody stuck in a time loop, oh that time loop again. It makes it to the list because I still think the core mechanics and dialogue are worth mentioning as they work to get you focused on the story. Instead of stopping and thinking about your options, it constrains you to answer like you would in a normal, day-to-day -day conversation. And this just does a lot for the fluidity and realism of the game. To me, it feels like a missed opportunity. The overall plot isn't short on cliches and lacks overall coherence. Play it though, if you don't like it after an hour, it is unlikely you will have more fun, so just drop it. <laughs>